All right, I'm here with John and Patty and Rebel. Hey, Rebel. Yeah. <laughs> Rebel wants to play, yeah. don't you, buddy? He wants to always play. Yeah, Rebel. How old is Rebel? Four. Four. Yeah. Well, he's just a he's just a very well behaved young man. He certainly is. <laughs> We've been getting the kick out of Rebel. Everybody's been enjoying petting him when they come by and everything. Mm -hmm. But uh, I was noticing. I by, by the way, the first thing I want to say is I really like the color of your trailer. Uh, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> it, it kind of matches my truck for. Yeah, uh, a standard color from the company. It yeah. got pretty close, so yeah, it got close. It does the job. Yeah. Now this, uh, what size is your trailer? The length and the width? Uh, sixteen by eight and a half by okay. seven and a half width tall. Yeah, you went with a seven foot six ceilings, and there's a reason for that, which we'll talk about here in a little bit on the yeah. inside. And the first thing we'll notice on this side, of course, is you've got an outside um, outlet right here. Correct. Yeah. With GFCI. Yeah. Oh, and that's smart. Yeah. Yes. It's it's really that's that's good. I'm glad to see that. Oh, and I didn't notice that, but you've also got yeah. a little outside light. Now both sides have a light. Yeah. Okay. Now that's uh, are those uh, motion sensitive? No. They okay. Are not. All right. Mighty fine. So you switch them from the inside. I'm yeah. Assuming. I have a switch right inside the door. Gotcha. Yeah. All right. Let's step on around over here to the front of the trailer. And the first thing I notice, of course. Uh, except, of course, for the mini split, but it yes, looks like you part. went ahead and got an extended tongue as well. Oh, yes, I did. Yeah. 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 The, the additional room it gives you to mount such things like the mini split. Exactly. Now, yours is, uh, what's the BTU rating on this one? Uh, 12,000. Mr. Cool. Yeah, 12,000. It's, it's a Mr. Cool brand. It looks very similar to ours. Ours is a Senville, but uh, the outside condenser looks very, very similar. Hmm, mm -hmm. interesting. But uh, was it very difficult to install? Actually, it was fairly simple. It's not at the DIY version. It's the one that you need to buy the vacuum pump for. But I don't see anybody spending the money on the DIY one, which is several hundred dollars more, when for the price of a vacuum pump, uh, you still have to hook up the same lines. You just put the sealer on properly, vacuum the lines down. And it took me... Once this thing was actually on those brackets and the head unit was in, the hookup and vacuum it took me less than an hour. Wow. Wow. You did better than we did. <laughs> it took us a little longer than that. But we were also fighting very, very brutal heat that particular day. <laughs> and it was dragging us down. But uh, so the next question is, how are you liking it so far? We love it. It's nothing like it. We live here in Florida and as hot as it gets in the middle of summer, I can get it, make it like an ice box in there. Yeah. 60 degrees Absolutely. or under if I wanted to. Yeah. And very quiet. I know. It's I know. running on high right now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You don't even hear it. All right. Well, let's step on around here to the other side because there's a couple more things we need to talk about over here. A couple of points of interest. Oh, yeah. This is where your power inlet's coming in. Let's go right. ahead and talk about that. And what did you wire it for 30 amp or 50 amp? That's 50 amp service. Okay. And uh, tell me the reason why you went with 50. You got any ideas about that? I, well, from the cost difference, number one, between 30 and 50 amp is negligible. Yes. And I went with eight circuits in the, in the trailer. I over-engineered the whole thing, kind of like your philosophy <laughs> in the first one. You do it once, you do it right, you make sure there's never going to be a problem. And each circuit has more than enough to do anything it ever could want to do. And a lot of people to, don't understand how much that goes up oh yeah. exponentially when you go from 30 to 50 Exactly. Amp. And then, of course, if you're at a campground where all they have is 30 amp, you buy a $20 dog leg. Which is what I have on. Which is what you're using right now. And then you're running on 30 amps. And, of course, this is your uh, water inlet. And I see you have an outside shower as Correct. well. Yes. Uh -huh. And I noticed... Uh, uh, your sewer line here. You went ahead and plumbed this up very similar to a regular RV. I'm not going to get down low because it's kind of hard for me to get back up. Yeah. But uh, step over here, John, and kind of tell us what's going on uh, tucked up real nice underneath the trailer here. All right. Under here, between this stud and that stud, is, uh, two, is two individual 30 gallon tanks that um, for gray, my gray water which come in from a one, and a one and a half inch connection into the side of the T right here. 
with its handle to you know discharge it. Right, your gate valve handle. Gate valve, yes, mm -hmm. correct. And I have a 28 gallon in the floor inside, which we'll talk about inside. That comes down to the three inch pipe. It comes into that side of the gate valve. So, uh, like a normal RV, right? You flush your black tank down, and then the gray cleans the hose out. Exactly. So you're using a regular RV style toilet on the inside. Correct. Yeah. Porcelain, the tallest one I can get because I'm a tall, bigger guy. <laughs> I hadn't noticed that. No. <laughs> you, you and I are very similar. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're, we're about the same size. <laughs> <laughs> Shoot, mm -hmm. but yeah, it. Uh, I, what I what really what I noticed immediately was that you've got that tucked up really nice up underneath there, and it, if you didn't have the hose up, hooked up to it, you'd have to look real hard to find it. Yeah. And uh, so you did a good job running all that. You, I'm sure that took a little bit of time to get that all worked out that way. Yeah, <laughs> I had the tanks. The tanks were as far over that way as possible, and I went up as high as I could to. To hide them and to get as much clearance as I could. Yes, I got gotcha. you. All right, well, let's step on around over here towards the uh, back. And this is, I really, really like this. This is just typical water with the water pressure gauge, water filter. Oh, yeah. 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 Person needs those, that's for sure. Pretty typical stuff. Oh, yeah. But man, I just love your uh, the way you've got your rear deck set up here. I'm going to step on over here so I can get a better shot straight on. And if you all want to stand up here, that's okay. Oops, I better watch out and not run into your tie down My here. My guy was, yeah. <laughs> but uh, you've got it set up where you can have some real nice, easy, leisurely uh, afternoons here. Yeah, this shade. was actually the first time we're using this. Uh, before we were leaving, two days before, I looked at the back and I was like, I really would like to have a, something to cover this. And in about five minutes, I was just standing on the side over here and my hand was actually standing on this. I'm like, what can I do here? And I had some PVC laying around and I just held it up here. I'm like, wait a minute. I looked at the rain gutter the, across and I said, I think I could do something with that, mm -hmm. with these bars something pretty simple and uh and this is a 50 dollar awning from start to finish wow two a couple of pieces of pvc two elbows a couple of clamps yeah you've simply got that clamped right to the bar here with a yeah with a couple of big hose clamps and uh now is this you didn't glue those did you glue no, those joints they are not glued. okay the yeah. elastics hold them as tight as you can ever want them gotcha yeah so it's real easy to pull it apart so yes. you can pack it when you go to take it down. Yeah. And, uh, oh yeah, now that I look at that closer, that's really neat the way you did that. And of course, this is a just a regular Eight car. Eight by 10. Uh-huh. Yeah, they had a 12 bucks at uh, Harbor Freight yep. for a 12 mil tarp, which is unbelievable for that size. I know that it. gauge. I know it, yeah. Uh, Deb and I visit, Har well, I visit Harbor Freight on a regular basis. She. Uh, they have some stuff that's good, some not so good. Just oh, watch sure. for the good stuff, and yeah. absolutely, absolutely. And I love your uh, your back doors here. And when we were inside a little bit ago, I automatically assumed that these were screen doors, but they're not. They right? started out as screen doors. They still have the screens in them, uh, but I before this trip I added uh, plexi to four panels of plexi that. Any one of them can be removed at any time, and uh, give me under under a minute, and they they'll be out. Uh huh. So we can have our screens wide open again if we like. Yeah, and that's neat. And then we'll be able to see that a little bit better when we walk inside as well. And I like the way you've got your lights hung around here. And I've got to say, our our trailer is on down over there somewhere. But uh, when we're sitting there in the evening, and you guys are out here, and you've got your lights on, hanging around your awning, it's just a uh, uh, a really cool look i've got to say it looks really they're neat actually led lights from harbor freight uh-huh yeah. yeah pretty cool lights and they're not expensive at all and, and 29 dollars. You know, i know and the thing about it is for 29 bucks when they quit throw them away and go buy another set yes you know keep on going so they gave an extra bulb with this one too and they have the replaceable bulbs there for like a buck and a half each so really yeah mm -hmm. yeah 
Yeah, well, it really, really adds to the look in the evening. We have, uh, we really enjoyed looking down through the row here and seeing how different folks have their uh, I do have side trailers lit up. That, uh, I've not had to use because the weather's been beautiful. Oh, don't you just hate it? No, <laughs> it's, just, it's horrible. I, I can't take it. Nobody come here. <laughs> Couldn't have asked for a, for a better week to have this, that's for sure. All right, so what we're going to do now, we're going to step inside and check out the interior. We'll be right back. Wow, this is pretty cool. <laughs> come on in, John. Yeah, yeah, John, come on in to your own trailer. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so the fact that you got the seven, six ceilings really shows here, and it really makes it feel uh, very roomy is, is the first thing I notice right yes. there. Yeah. And one thing we do want to mention before we continue is this is still a work in progress, correct? Yes, it is. Right, right. And, of course, the first thing people are going to ask, we're standing in the living area. And I like the way you have their, your nice, easy, comfortable chairs here. And, of course, you went with the lightweight uh, plastic-type chairs, which, here again, it doesn't weigh very much. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's the, the weight issue there. And uh, But what do you do when you want to go to bed at night? We have a queen size, eighteen inch yeah, higher mattress. That's actually phenomenal. Mm -hmm. It's it's one that doesn't lose any air. We've had it for a number of years now, mm -hmm. and uh, it sits across and it does the job for right now. Uh, eventually, when the bed gets built, which would be it will be an elevator bed. Uh, the bed will end up being about this height above my head. Yes, I'll be sir. able to walk under it. There'll be a full couch there that also flips into a bed. The whole length of that stretch right there. With storage underneath. With storage underneath, correct. Mm -hmm. This side will have some kind of water tank. I'm not sure yet. That will be determined as we get to that point of it. Um, whatever level I make the back of the couch is where the bed's going to come down to. Possibly to when the back is flipped open. I'm not sure yet. That's yet to be determined to have multiple positions to put the bed in, in case we have company. So we could put a midpoint so we can climb into it and sleep with somebody, two people sleeping underneath and then us above or just bring it all the way down and let's just sleep normally. Sure. Sure. Uh -huh. And I saw you kind of eyeing uh, Brad's trailer with the way he has his elevator okay. bed set up with the garage door spring set up. I put off building this bed until this event to get a look at other trailers to see what they've done to see to get ideas. Like we're always looking for ideas because uh, we all do our due diligence, most of us do anyway, and I don't make a decision before looking at at least... Oh, a couple of hundred different things. <laughs> <laughs> and, I'm the same way. Yeah. Uh, I have a, a version that has seat belt straps with ratchets similar to uh, from a ratchet strap, but just the, you know, the tumbler, the round part that would attach in four spots, then the rails, and then a uh, worm drive motor with a bar underneath that would just bring it up and down. That's the one that I kind of settled on with an aluminum frame. Until I looked at his across there. <laughs> and then I see a lot less issues down the line. If you don't have a motor, you don't have future problems. Mm -hmm. And I like the fact that his just goes up and it goes down just by pulling a couple of pins and pushing it down. What kind of floor did you go with here? This is a vinyl plank. These are waterproof. six foot, yeah, waterproof vinyl plank, six foot by eight inch, I think they are. Yeah, I wanted to get the place. longer and wider ones because of the motorcycle. There is under your feet there, there's a mount in the floor. Uh, the main mount is underneath the deck outside, but uh, there's a quick disconnect under the floor right there. That's I put that in place and then I just drive the motorcycle right in and I have four uh, tie downs in the corner. So. Yeah. And what kind of bike you, do you have? That's a Yamaha Royal Star Venture. Okay. A big road bike. I see you've got a microwave right here. Yep. Is that right? Mm -hmm. And then your fridge. How big is your fridge here? Four and a half. Oh, 4.7 cubic feet. It's a strictly refrigerator and like everybody else's we play Tetris. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh, That's cool yeah. stuff. Oh yeah. 
Uh, we we do have uh, cooler, which you'll see once you go in the bathroom because that's in the shower right now, okay. taking up less room that way. Sometimes I keep it in the truck. This time I happen to have it in the shower for drinks. Gotcha, gotcha. And then of course you have some storage right here, a uh, drawer and a and a cabinet. And right now our bed is actually in the lower cabinet, but mm -hmm. the, this Cuisinart we'll fits in right in there with the um, and cooktops, the induction cooktop. Oh good. When everything fits underneath there so that we have the full counter space back. Awesome, awesome. Yeah, and you got your uh, your sink here and a fancy faucet. Fancy faucet. Did, so did I work at Lowe's. So oh. this is mostly Lowe's product. I <laughs> see. <laughs> Actually, she stole my the one I bought for this, she put wanted me to put in the house. Well, oh, yeah. The faucet that he bought for this is the, in our kitchen. The big now. <laughs> restaurant style with the spring on it, the, the nozzle you pull down. That's the one I bought for this. Yeah. And this was only, we don't, our house was only completely renovated uh, before I built this, only a year before. So it was still brand new. We just took that out of the house and put it in here instead of that one. I see. I think it fits nicer. Oh, yeah. But I didn't ask you this before when we did our initial walk around before we started the video, but uh, have you got this set up uh, with a 12 volt pump, a water pump and all that stuff too? When uh, I have everything, I just did not put it in because until the bed and the couch are completely built, I'm not sure of the style tank, so that's not installed yet. Gotcha. Okay. All it's right. all ready to go. The wiring's... Uh, uh, I have uh, rope strings run underneath everything to pull wiring right through that whole section. Down it's to ready there. to go. Just to mm -hmm. ready to go. And again, it's a work in progress. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. There you go. There you go. All right. Well, uh, I'm going to step over here and let you uh, direct us towards the bathroom area and we can kind of talk about this for a little bit. Yeah. This, well, I have four zones of lighting in the ceiling here. Uh -huh. uh, two under remote control, one over the bed. Yeah, and one, and the one right above your head, the two over the kitchen. Okay, and then the mains I could shut off with this. Uh huh. So in the evening, when you want less light or something, and you're laying in bed, want to read, we just have those on. I and they're see. dimmable. And they're all yeah, they're dimmable. Yeah, and those are all uh, uh, twelve volt LED. Yeah, and there's right. triple redundant wiring in the ceiling because it's the only place that wiring is sealed in. So I have there's a sister line to every one of the mains for each each zone mm -hmm. and then the way i ran the wiring if any one of those zones should fail twice even i could uh, adapt it to the another line and for a third line of right right protection so all wiring by the way when you don't need more more than 20 gauge for these leds and i'm with four zones i'm not pulling any power mm -hmm. but i still have 12 gauge mm -hmm. for all the led lighting yeah, that's the way we went in ours. Uh, the smallest wire we have anywhere is 12. Yeah. And on some circuits, uh, on our 12 volt circuits, we even ran number 10. Yeah. Like to our uh, water pumps and the ceiling fan and stuff like that. Yeah. Just because. Yeah, correct. I mean, that's exactly what I did with that one. Oh, I'm um, happy to hear that. And that is a Max Air? Max Air fan. Uh -huh. That's one with the remote control and thermostat. So. Oh, you've got the fancy one. Yes, yeah, you with did. the permanent lid on it so you can leave it open all the time. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I've got the manual one that uh, I only have four speeds. And That's it's nice because down here in Florida, I never leave it closed. I leave it on thermostat all the time. So whenever the humidity level or temperature gets to a certain point, it just pulls all that out. So I never have to worry about mold. You never have to worry about uh, switching it off and on on your own. Nope. Yeah, that's cool. All right, now let's step in here, and the first thing I see is that the floor is raised here, and there's a reason for that. Yes, this is a 28 gallon uh, black tank that um, I made it so that it is accessible if need be. Uh, I did not make the floor for the entire bathroom in one piece. I separated it at the shower mm -hmm. and alongside those cabinets. So simply by pulling the front molding up, pulling the vinyl plank flooring up, which is a floating floor, I can take that up and take it out if need be. I hopefully there's never a need. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, well, but then again, if there was, you'd have access to it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. and that's the yeah. whole point. Yeah. Now, did you go with a regular uh, pre-manufactured tank, or did you, did you make one or something? I, I, it's a standard size tank that I made all the holes in. 
Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Old so you got one without stuff. the holes and then made your own holes. I did everything. There you go. The old, old yeah. Lines, yeah. There's a, I don't know what kind of product you used to do that, but uh, I discovered Uniseal, and Uniseal works real neat uh, to make your holes and then those oh, things. Oh, on, the, on the rubber grommets, yeah. I used uh, the 3M. Um, oh, my goodness. Forget the number of it. It's, okay. it's the marine one that's supposed to last forever. Oh yeah, well that's yeah. even better. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure. And here is your RV style toilet. Yeah, correct. Uh huh. That's a, for a big guy like me. I needed a tall toilet. So well, that's okay. You don't have to demonstrate. <laughs> <laughs> well, I figured I'd get out of the picture because I'm blocking the whole middle. <laughs> Big guys block big pit block big areas. <laughs> and I see you got some storage over here. Yeah, four uh, cabinets that go as far back as uh -huh. the wall well, there. Go and back all at, way uh, to at the least nose. 24 inches, maybe deeper. The, the 25, 26? Pretty, okay. pretty close. Yeah. Just about 26 inches to the front. We have full usage of them. They're mm -hmm. a mess now because, but there you go. This, That's okay. We got all all right. My 12 volt systems are. Uh, and a separate and on this side here I have an inverter a converter the the 12 volt uh, fuse panel uh, another AC I have four more outlets that I can use okay. this is actually where I transfer for going on the road into the inverter and running the refrigerator I just take that plug take okay. it out of there put it into the inverter show that to us again there because I pulled the camera this is the AC line for the refrigerator and when I go on the road, just turn the inverter on, take this plug, put it right in that hole, and we have a refrigerator on the road. Ah, uh, yeah, cool. And until I hook up the solar system, that's gonna suffice. All righty, and uh, what do we got going on back in here? We have on-demand water right here. Let me get this out. Oh, it's fine. Honey, I got it. It's fine, it's fine. Yeah, on-demand gas land uh, water here. Mm-hmm. Uh, you can hold your hand right over top of that. This is discharged in here, but the fan's always running when we're using it. Yeah. But I put this here more, I don't know, peace of mind and uh, than anything else. Gotcha. And I see that this is where you're venting your uh, This is the, your, your the drain commode. System. Right. The, it goes, yeah, everything right. goes here. Gotcha. This is not finished yet. The of wires course. aren't in their permanent place. They will be run neatly over to the side. There's enough wire run to come down and make them nice and neat. And this is gonna be boxed in kind of like yours is mm -hmm. out to here. And out to, you know, this is all this is all gonna be covered here. Gotcha. To protect all the wire. Of course. And then of course, uh, you're still looking at putting some cabinets above your head right, right. here. Mm -hmm. And that will, uh, that will serve to uh, camouflage the wiring there, but yet you'll still have access to it if you ever need to get there. Yeah, correct. Yeah. And how big is your shower? 36 by 36. Mm -hmm. I'm a big guy and I can't be in a small shower. I understand. I understand. Yeah, we had a 32 by 32 in the red trailer and I made it work, but uh, it was a little tight for me. A little tight. And whatever, pat, whatever trim I put on there, I'm going to make the left side removable so that with the removal of that one piece and a couple of screws on that left panel, I can take that panel out. I can always get to the AC drain lines and mm -hmm. everything without much trouble at all. Gotcha, gotcha. All righty, well, I'm gonna step back down here. Mm -hmm. And uh, man, this is just really, really neat. Oh, and here's, I forgot to mention, this is where the air handler is for, the, for your mini split on the inside. So I'm assuming, we didn't probably didn't see it, but I'm assuming you ran your tubes yeah, along. they come up. I ran them underneath. I didn't want to come in through the, through the front wall, so I came underneath through the floor. And they come up here, and oh, then they go it, around in the back behind the shower. There's yeah. a cavity behind the shower. And like I said, this will all be covered up once these wires are removed over here. And then I'm, these are all going to be covered, and this is going to be sitting flush against the wall. Yeah, okay. So that everybody will know the lines that he's pointing to is the refrigeration lines. This is the uh, AC that, lines right here. Right, that go to the... Uh, they go to the air handler, uh, which is part of the mini split. It goes to the air handler, which you mount on the inside. And it's running right now, isn't it? You can't even yeah. hear it. Yeah. So I mean, we actually didn't turn it on much before we, you got in here, and uh, it's on high right now, and you oh, can't even hear it. Oh, yeah. And uh, it's quite comfortable in here. And I believe the temperature outside right now is up in the mid 80s already today, so wow. Yeah. And you know? Yeah, we just turned it on, what, 15 minutes ago? How do you? Yeah. 
Well, John and Patty, we're so tickled that you took the time to show us uh, your creation here, and it's coming along quite nicely. I can't wait to see what the finished product will look like. And of course, uh, I know that we'll be able to see that because you guys have already made your reservation for Correct. Rendezvous 2023, Rendezvous Yay. right, <laughs> which will be held February 20th through February 27th mm -hmm. of 2023, mm -hmm. right here at the same campground. It's a Tuckney uh, family canoe and cabin. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I got you, Bill. <laughs> oh, I've been talking to so many people all during the week, and sometimes it, my brain gets a little yeah. scrambled. But anyway, again, thank you so much. Uh, this is going to really be cool when you get it done, and I mm -hmm. can't wait to see the uh, the finished product. You've done a fantastic job to this point, and I'm certain that. Uh, It'll be a fantastic uh, setup when you get all done. But for right now, we're going to sign off. And this is Bill and Patty and John and John <laughs> saying, "I was going. I wasn't going to forget you, John. I promise. I promise. This is Bill and Patty and John with I Ride Tiny House Adventures. And you know what we always say: We're, we're not, not camping. camping. We're, we're living." living. <laughs>